Hello loreheads, and welcome to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. Today we're talking about the Unbreakable Spear Pantheon, who was released February 2nd, 2010. Yeah, but when did he get the rework? I mean, that's... Right. That's real Pantheon. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I realized he got, like, a full rework. Oh, Damn. Yeah. Old Pantheon was real different. What did he do before? Well, well he it was a lot simpler. Sky drop went straight down instead of in a line for sure. one thing. When was the... Okay. Did I play League at this time? And it used to be called He Man was like three Ball. goblins in a coat. <laughs> <laughs> really fucking different. No, um, I like Manfall, though. That's my favorite Bond movie. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, yeah. <laughs> and then he also had, like, that passive where uh, um, when the shield was circling him, he'd just ignore the next hit against him. Is that not what he does including now? Including turret shots. Uh, I think turret it, shots. Oh. It's kind of, he's got a, another, like, attack stacking mechanic. It's way more... It's I mean, it's more intricate. It's it's not like an old League passive. You know, oh, where see, it's they're just, saying like, 2019. Thing. That's... That's not it, I mean, right? That's probably it, yeah. Yeah, it's, let's see, about three years ago. It's yeah. Recent. And his spear used to just be a point and click. It wasn't like a targeted thing, and it would automatically execute under a certain percentage health. I feel like based on how often I got hit by the Pantheon spear, I thought it still was a point and click. <laughs> <laughs> hey ooh. And he had a point and click uh, stun, where he would just jump on your ass. He doesn't still do that? He still does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, come on. He's not like you. massively Don't gaslight different. me like that, John. He's like... <laughs> but it looks different. <laughs> it is like more complex. Like old Pantheon just... I mean, he's just super old, right? 2010, like you said. You know, he's... Like they took... Yeah. I feel like they took the bones and then they just like put some meat on those those bones, <laughs> as it were. Mm, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for this episode, we also have a very special guest, uh, Kyle, joining us. Um... <laughs> Say hello, Kyle. Oh. <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, what made you want to join um, for Pantheon? So I started playing League, I think 2011, sometime back then. Damn. Okay. And I'm kind of a history buff, so when I saw uh, that there's basically like a Greek Spartan to play, I'm like, that's the guy I want to play. So he was the first champion I saved up, um, what was it, influence points for. Like, I grinded oh, it out yeah. now, like, over and over again just to get him. And I still love him to this day, so. Do you still main him, um, you say? He was one of the first ones I ground out IP for, too. Oh, really? Interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, um, I don't necessarily, like, main him, but I definitely have him in like my pocket if I ever want to play him again so <laughs> do you play him support no. uh, okay good I would have I would have had yeah, to top, top or mid lane support you know it's like <laughs> okay good I fucking hate Pantheon support so much yeah <laughs> so do you like anytime you go against one you know it's going to be the worst game you've ever played no it's Yasuo <laughs> yeah, yeah but not, Yasuo not Shaco Yasuo showing up down there can't support <laughs> so do you like him post rework then it seems like you do um Yes and no. There's gameplay aspects mm. that I don't like about New Pantheon, but um, lore-wise, I like him better now than he was. Sure. I mean, I think... He's I know we'll talk about it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I was, I was curious, because I never really played him before. I tried learning him as he is now. Um, he's too aggressive for me. I... I <laughs> I feel like with him you gotta grip it and rip yeah. it. I don't have the I don't do that. <laughs> um, I don't like his new ult compared to his old ult. Oh. Oh, okay. What did his old ult do? He jumps straight up circle. And then it'd be a circle that he came straight down on. Now he throws the spear and like rushes to it. Um Why do I have no memory of this old Pantheon ult? It wasn't I have no that idea. long ago. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he didn't show up that much in competitive, so maybe that's why. Maybe he just wasn't played as often. I don't know. Oh, not really, no. <laughs> I haven't seen yeah. a lot of people that <laughs> play him, so. Yeah, it's fair. Uh, Y'all want to give us your best Pantheon impressions? No. We were just talking. 
<laughs> before we start recording about how we are not fucking prepared. I mean, well, like, now <laughs> normally I would say guests go first, but given that y'all have no idea, I kind of want to hear you guys go first. Okay, I know what so he sounds said- like. <laughs> I just haven't practiced in the way John that I do sometimes. John said he was, I was surprising, his reworked voice. Mm-hmm. Why would it be surprising? Okay, let me. <clears throat> we are what we overcome. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> that would be surprising. That would shock me. <laughs> that is not what shocking. I. Swear. Is that what he sounds like? <laughs> Fucking spot on. Thank you. That's Star Guardian. I Pantheon. wish. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that was my Pantheon impression. Somebody I else. liked it better. Um, I do Thank know you. what he sounds like, um, I will say. Uh, he's like, uh, God, okay. <sighs> Why do you fight? Oh, okay. Nice. Something like that. He's very aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's... All right, Kyle, All right, you're cool. up. Um, he's like, stand up. Face me again. Ooh. Very good, very that good. good. There is no pity, no mercy. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. That was a little bit of some D&D voices you've got going <laughs> He's on basically there. Leonidas. We got a whole party right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whole party playing the same character, but with I, I, I kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> you oh a little one God. shot, Future. you get everyone Future. the same yeah. character sheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this idea. Okay. Well, now we know how we're getting back into D&D. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, that would be a blast. Yeah, I was just surprised because I feel like old Pantheon had stereotypical, like, growly just, voice. Oh, um, he just sounded like a dude. Yeah, and I feel like they, they made, um, they made like, a special effort with the new voiceover to give him, like, uh, an actual, like, grease accent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Um. Yeah, I wish I could do an impression of old Pantheon. I don't even remember what he sounds old like. Pantheon, I remember his ability, when you but. picked him, it was my favorite thing ever. Because he's like, they were they <laughs> are privileged to die at my feet. Oh my god, it's like <laughs> I'm actually here. <laughs> it's like you reverted the patch where they changed him. And it just happened right now in front of me. That's really fucking good. Holy shit. <laughs> you also play a lot yeah. of Pantheon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. And you know, that's the whole alt thing it makes sense because they would die literally <laughs> yeah. at his feet as he fucking just dropped on their heads it's because his, mean, pe- his feet used to be so big he was pizza yeah. foot pizza yeah, foot pants yeah, right. I mean, that was just <laughs> old champions right it was like we really have to make sure that people can see their feet right so what are they walking on? The last on? game I played was Kingdom Hearts, and I only took one thing away from it, and I'm going to bring it into this game's design. It was Quentin Tarantino was directing <laughs> he was back there <laughs> All right, so what's Pan- what Pantheon right, uh, got going on? Uh, so on the Ryan Universe page, he has a bio. And just one short story linked and some old concept art. But uh, there are a couple of short stories that aren't linked. One seemed like maybe an older color story. Yeah, he yeah. has two that are still on Universe, just not linked to his page. And they are specifically Pantheon stories. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not like they're linked in anyone else's pages. They're just not fucking linked because universe and shit yes yeah. the other one is the one that was released this year um it was tied to the call so we had read it and talked about it in a patreon episode before right. but yeah. yeah i had to skip that episode i'm like i don't want anything ruined for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i find it funny one. yeah it was i think we'll like talking about it i find it funny that the like the oldest story and the newest story are both not linked <laughs> like oh man <laughs> Some things never change. Uh, or it, things change. It is upsetting that these new stories aren't getting linked to the champion pages. It's just very clear that like they're not updating the it, website. It's like, <laughs> like for, if it's anything like it used to be, what happened is there is one person mm. who's responsible for it. And if that person is ever out of the office or on vacation or anything when a new story comes out, they don't have a pipeline to say this is the work that needs to be done when you get back. They just come back, and then the time has passed, and it will never get changed. <laughs> that's my guess. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on, but it's a... Who knows, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, wants, I have yeah. um, zero notes today. I'm very sorry. Really? Well, 
Oh, well, this one well, I actually took right. notes. I Sorry, I mean a joke. I didn't need Sorry. the sass. I just meant there was a lot of fucking shit here. I had to take notes just to organize. I know. My problem is my baby no longer <laughs> sleeps during the day. <laughs> oh, shit. She, okay. She's decided she needs my undivided attention at all times. So I can occasionally get the story read on my phone, and then I have absolutely no way to take notes about it. That's fair. <laughs> One-handed. <laughs> um, we'll get there, but... Yeah. Yeah, that's no right. Well... We've got, we've got other people here that can... Thank you. Kyle will be Rebecca today. <laughs> Playing the role of Rebecca. <laughs> You're going to need to get a lot more wine in you. You're going to be doing that. Yeah, you got some Chardonnay? <laughs> no. <laughs> so who wants to cover the bio then by David Slangle? Uh, I do have I notes mean, if, if, you know. Go we could it. all slap it together, right? He's Pantheon. Sure. It's, it's, you climb out Targon and... He's a little less straightforward than you'd think, honestly. <laughs> there was a lot of layers. He's a little onion. I don't even know if he's Pantheon. <laughs> I mean, he's not. He's not. He's, and I still, by the way, wanted to call him Atreyu every time I see his name. It's oh, yeah. Atreus. I had this problem when, when we, we did the video for the call. Mm. Every time I want to start with a, like, Atreyu. I just, Atreyu. I just want to call him Atreyu. Atreus, right? Atreus. God, why do I have so much trouble? You never stop being hardcore. You know, that's all I'll say is that, you know. (laughs) Yeah. This story truly is never ending. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Is that a reference to a song of theirs or some shit? I don't know. Oh, she was talking about a Treyu from the never ending story. I was thinking of the. You're completely (laughs) right. Oh, God, Mark. Okay, Mark, this whole time (laughs) you thought I just meant, like, I really liked the old fucking music. Like the band, a Treyu. <laughs> Look, I can imagine Vex listening Look, to a Treyu. The band is not as old as the movie, The Neverending Story. <laughs> you're, you're so let's not correct. throw this old but shit. But has on. he met me? <laughs> no, Would I like a Treyu or The Neverending Story? I kind of feel both. like both. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. I never got into a Treyu. I honestly forgot they existed until you said that. Hey. <laughs> no, I met a Treyu from The Neverending Story. You're, you're right. You had the right one in your brain. I had the wrong one. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, a Treyu. Was a normal boy. <laughs> yeah. Where is he from? Targon? I don't know. No. Sharima? That's a rough start. Yeah, it's from Targon. Take it away, Mark. <laughs> Atreyu. He's from Targon. He's one of the Rakor, so he was trained to be the Raharok, like the Solari, like Superboys. And uh, he's not the best. Solari Superboys. Solari Superboys. What's up? It sounds like a fucking. NBA super team. <laughs> the <laughs> worst NBA they call super the, team. Like the Olympics team. <laughs> yeah, oh man. Uh, so yeah, so he's he's not the best, but he always he, he gets knocked down, but he always gets back up. And he forms at first a rivalry <laughs> and then a very strong kinship with another guy named Pilus. So one day their patrol is ambushed by says a, bar- a barbarian invasion and they're the only ones that survive and the aspect of the sun uh, refuses to destroy those invaders. So old a and p uh decides they're going to ascend targon and they're going to get the power of the aspects and deal with that shit themselves um climbing up mount targon sucks ass uh pilas kind of dies on the peak and atreus is the only one left uh but he does become host to the aspect pantheon but pantheon kind of i don't know deems him unwor- unworthy and kind of just assumes so fucking funny assumes they, they direct specifically control. They specifically call out he had lost every battle he'd ever fought. So Pantheon was like, "You're a little bitch." Yeah, he's like, "I like, I like the hardware, the software, not so much." So I'm just gonna gut this chassis. Um, and yeah, he just kind of drives him around, and Pantheon is just kind of stuck in the back of his own head, like just very being John Malkovich. But now eventually, so Pantheon's whole deal is he's scouring the world for Darken. He finds one in the form of Aatrox. They fight, and Aatrox actually kills like Pantheon. And it actually strikes Pantheon's constellation from the sky. So the, the aspect is dead. But through some sort of mechanisms, um, Atreus comes, kind of comes back and survives. Like, the Pantheon's dead, but he lives because he just really you know, didn't want to die. Yeah, we talked about with Mordekaiser's episode that we were like, where are the good guys who are still alive because they were too stubborn to die? And th- I guess it's this one. <laughs> You know what? At this point, I'm not even like mad at it because it's become a very established thing. It's like if you just are really pissed off or really don't want to die, <laughs> you're alive. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, it's very Kingdom Hearts in that way. Anyway, <laughs> he he recovers at the homestead of uh, Pilus' widow, uh, Ayla. They say it in Runeterra. I think it's Ayla. That's how you pronounce it? Anyway. Them. 
I think so. I have no it's idea. E- no idea. Oh, sorry, I A L A. It's like Yala. Oh, because yeah. oh, I'm. In any case, it's spelled differently on the y- wiki. Never mind. <laughs> Eula, you're right. Oh. Not Yala. Eula. Okay. I, uh, I I mistyped it, but I have it typed el- better elsewhere. My notes are a little <laughs> off. You Eula. Eula. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, after like months, the end user license agreement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't it's get that reference. It's a I'm big not a commitment. fucking nerd. <laughs> You don't read your EULA before you uh, cite a producer. Oh, software. is that what people call it? Are we reading your EULA G? <laughs> no. No? Oh, no. My God. <laughs> You're fired, Mark. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, what happens? He recovers for a few months. He goes north to kind of fight those barbarians who killed uh, you know, his patrol, whatever, in the day. And he finds them, and they're under siege from Aatrox. And this is where he kind of has like his moment of realizing, oh, the barbarians were driven here by Aatrox. Fuck Darken, fuck Aspects, um, humans forever. And he defends the barbarians, fights off Aatrox, and he kind of, kind of like Lord of the Rings, a seal doors him, where he like he gets a good strike in and cuts off the sword arm, and so Aatrox goes back on the sword. And um, now Atreus calls himself Pantheon now because he's no longer Atreus, and he is now ready to like he fights demons, Darken, Aspects, all, everybody who's like a weird demigod or ascended even. Not about that life. You know what? That's fair, honestly. Yeah. He's like, all these stupid fucking gods aren't actually helping anybody. Fuck them. Do we Can need I, to get the baby? Like, editorialize and then, like, <laughs> hell yeah. Atreus 2024. Maybe, fuck maybe. aspects. <laughs> fuck demons. You know, fuck, <laughs> fuck ascended. Fuck all of it. He's completely right, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Now, some interesting things about the bio. Mm. It's very coincidental that he was named after a star in the Pantheon constellation. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that detail. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like like Harry Potter, right? Like, people are just named after things that they are. <laughs> yeah, right. Even, you know, I don't know. Remus Lupin. He's Lupin. <laughs> and, but it's like he was born a werewolf. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I agree. I, I, that's why, I think that's why I didn't even mention that detail. is because it's like, in my mind, probably just better if that's not it i like i think they like what's cool is that he's supposed to have that constellation like tattooed on his chest or whatever and then it's also kind of pierced through with the scar um mm-hmm. which is like i get it i get what's i get the imagery but like maybe he could just have that constellation or it was like it burnt into his skin or something when he got hosted or some crazy shit you know yeah um kyle how did you like the bio as a history nerd <laughs> is that why you said you liked the yeah, yeah. right um <laughs> It's very kind of like, I guess, like the movie 300. Uh, Oh, yeah. Like climbing the mountain is the same as like the kids going out and they have to go survive for a week or whatever it is. And in the scene, they like kill wolves and everything like that. But (laughs) not everybody makes it back. And like there's he's basically like King Leonidas. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. I haven't seen 300 in so long. <laughs> and they lean super hard into that in the old. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say too. the old. Oh, yeah. Like my profession. You know, even that old. <laughs> yeah. Big bad dog, Which I'm seriously. Glad they kept yeah. in. You know, at least a nod to it. I think even in like the old like lore to a bit. I thought that old, that older story, the one that's kind of wishy-washy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that action piece read very much like that to me. It's very fluid and it's like description of how he's. Yeah. You know, doing things and whatnot. So they all, everyone who created Pantheon had just watched 300. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly in 2010. Like, <laughs> I was literally imagining like the Snyder, like slow motion <laughs> during that entire action short story. Yeah. Well, you know. Fuck, I want to watch 300. I like 300, <laughs> yeah. It's like, still feels the best, man. I think I have the DVD man. somewhere. <laughs> Uh, so when they mentioned that his best friend's name was Pilus, mm-hmm. did like anyone Silas? else imagine Silas with like a <laughs> snidely whiplash mustache? <laughs> it's <laughs> me, Pilus. He's like the Fucking warrior. Wario, yes. <laughs> oh my god, that's so stupid. I love it. All right, if we can get some fan art of a Wario Silas who is by. <laughs> He's got Eula tied to the train tracks or whatever, and it's like, oh, no, that was his wife. <laughs> maybe Silas the is con. the Wario version of Pilus, then, actually. Oh, maybe. We had it turned around. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I just say that because I fucking hate <laughs> so Fuck you, Silas. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit on his side, and <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> sure. We're getting there. Um, We're getting close. 
I yeah. see that in this story too, the aspect of the sun has refused to kill barbarian trespassers, which we know from her color story. She's well past that now. <laughs> yeah. She's well on the side of murder and barbarian trespassers now. <laughs> yes. I do like, though, no, because no, we hadn't read Pantheon's lore, and we, we saw the call, we were like, why the hell is Pantheon fighting Leona? Now we know. Mm. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple things. Aspect. Like, I feel like uh, when you read Leona's lore, she comes off very, like, you know, she's still like Leona from the block, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, reading other sure. people, <laughs> reading other people's, like, accounts of Leona and, like, what she's like now, we get, like, a very different picture of, like, the impact that being an aspect is having on her. Yeah, well, I think that was something, can I say, I really like uh, what they did with, like, the whole idea of Atreus as, like, this former aspect host and who's, like, comes out of the whole experience, like, fuck that. I'm going to kill those guys, even if that's, if it like, kills me. I'm gonna do it. Um, yeah, but I was I found that really interesting because like thinking about that story with Leona, I remember she was always constantly having to hold back her aspect. Like it wanted to do things a lot more seriously, and she was always kind of holding it back. So I, I, I I'd be more interested to see like what is that like now for her. I want to see I want to see Atreus interact with like every single aspect, and like does she hold some sort of blame for like the state that he was in? Because she was it potentially within the the position to try and stop it right like that's a different thing right than just I, being... I also wonder if pantheon believes that every aspect is controlled the way he was that's a good question you know maybe I he think... assumes that even leo like leona isn't leona's in there somewhere All buried you stab you know? her through the chest to bring I just her back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's a good know. question you know it'll be interesting if he was was working like i mean it would make sense that's his only experience with it you know yeah but um i mean how insulting (laughs) (laughs) that you're the only one who was so taken over that you're the only one whose aspect was like listen (laughs) you suck so bad i just i can't let you have any control (laughs) yeah another weird thing that i think is unique to pantheon is do we have names of any of the other aspects because Leona's just mm. Leona. She's the aspect of the sun. We got, you know, Diana's just the aspect of the moon. Zoe's the aspect of twilight. But those were all their names before they became aspects. Do we know any other aspect's name? Um, Like, as oh, interesting. Rather than being the aspect of blank, like their actual. Mm-hmm. And that is a very interesting question. Because off the top of my head, no. Right? I can think of only what they're known as. Like, the, the, the aspect of blank, yeah. Yeah, they also list the other like hosts of Pantheon beforehand, like on the, the yeah. Pit. Oh, yeah. Like oh. it says previous hosts like Zeonia, Astrea, and Arion were previous hosts. So yeah, yeah, and they got um. I have it in the the fun facts. I think even like uh, all of all of his equipment was just ganked from his previous hosts. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> See. He rolled. Yeah. He rolled for it, and he was able to get it. <laughs> so Sleight of hand check. His spear is named Skyfall and was used by a previous. Oh, Skyfall! Host, That's another James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really snuck him in. Double O Seven music the plays when he Aegis bolts. and was used by Zionia. Uh, his cloak is named Solstice and was used by Astraya, and his helmet is called Nova and was used by well current host atreus that's an atreus special baby yeah you gotta bring your own you can't be aping everybody's yeah it's i mean germs you can be a pink guy <laughs> <laughs> it's covid times baby you, gotta, you can't just take somebody else's mask and put it on your face <laughs> Nasty. yeah that's a good point i i uh yeah, there's a there's a lot of meat like i was saying to this whole like not just in the kit but in this 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 like bio like yeah the fact that he goes from being like originally him to being taken over and then like casting it off and becoming like his own version of Pantheon, like that's a really that's a lot to happen to somebody, you know what I mean? This <laughs> dude's lived a full ass life. Yeah. And one thing that <laughs> I guess that's I don't true. think they touched on this, like they just mentioned they mentioned a few things in passing in this bio that I really was like, no excuse me, go back. 
Um, one of which they mentioned like that fight with Aatrox happened um, when Aatrox was trying to ascend Mount Targon to get the power of an aspect. Like, what the fuck happens if a Darken actually makes it to the top of Mount Targon? Because that seems like a problem. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a really big fucking deal, right? And then the fact that he lost that fight is like, so did did he succeed? You know, like, I guess we assume not, because the world isn't completely fucked, but, you know. And, like, another bit, they, they mention, in passing... The God Killing Blade of Aatrox, which I went back to the Aatrox by and was like, Excuse me, God Killing Blade of Aatrox? Where the fuck did this come from? Shit's nowhere in Aatrox's bio. I feel and like. You mention a God Killing Blade? I feel like Aatrox called it that, maybe. <laughs> but it killed a god! <laughs> I mean, it, be, it certainly became the God Killing Blade. I think the broader point that I would say is that like they need to backfill some of this shit into the Aatrox it's so funny yeah. we were just talking about like oh I want to go revisit Aatrox but it's like with this it's like I kind of want to revisit Aatrox because there's like all this extra <laughs> shit he did that they didn't just isn't even written in a story it's just in this bio right and especially a, a couple things too like another thing that upset me is the fact that like Aatrox and, and Pantheon obviously are very connected which is why Aatrox is linked on Pantheon's Connected to page, you know who's not connected to fucking Aatrox on his universe page? Pantheon, this which is, is half of the lore we get about Aatrox is in Pantheon's bio. This is that I'm your my like you're my best friend, but I'm not your best friend type situation all over again. Ouch. Uh, yeah, fuck. And another thing about this God Killing Blade, okay? John's really like, going back to the, I'm back on the Pringles can again. Okay, John's so, had a lot of meat today. Just, you're going to have to give him a pass. Uh, so, Celestial's whole fucking thing, Zoe taught the people how to bind people to weapons. Like, specific weapons. They could choose the weapons that people were getting bound to. Why in God's name would you bound Aatrox the darken who wants to kill the gods to a god killing blade we did find him somewhere else we did kind of talk about that i feel like in atrox's episode well we just were like why did you bind them to their own damn weapons bind them to like a pebble on a beach you know because <laughs> magic you know there's reasons the magic won't work if it's not their way you know that's the immediate throwaway right i feel Some like chlorians oh, no. or <laughs> right I feel like God Killing Blade in this context is just referring to like the weapon he had literally almost like just used or like a few months ago to kill Pantheon. Like I think that's all that means. That it's not like it wasn't it was it became a God Killing Blade because it did that. Yes. It's like the, yeah. it describes its function. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't Imagine know, like the, the the balls of the blacksmith to make it and be like it's a God Killing Blade, you know, when he sold it to <laughs> Right. <laughs> It either All right. works or if it doesn't, they're dead. So I mean, no skin off my back. <laughs> Good luck, have fun. Feel free to talk over us at any point, by the way, because we have a habit of rambling. It's fine. <laughs> That's why we're almost thirty minutes in. <laughs> no, yeah. Thing. Uh, no, but really, like, there's a lot about of... this goddamn god killing boy. <laughs> I think like there's to your point. I think there's a lot of vagaries, a lot, and they get into some of this in other the stories, which I appreciate. But like the the idea of the barbarian invasion, like where the fuck is that from? Is that from like Demacia? I, know, I guess they came across the ocean, like we saw in that other story. But like because they, they drive so much of the action, but they're just the barbarians who we don't like ever really know anything about. You know? You know what? I, you know what I think? <laughs> I think they brought the gut. What? <laughs> All right, so I, I'll be Give honest. For the longest fucking time, when I looked at the map of uh, Rune like Terra. Rune Terra, I always thought that Targon was on top of the Freljord, uh, not uh -oh. next to Sharima. And uh -oh. I think that's because of all of the bullshit they have about barbarians. Like barbarians, to me, like they're they've always been Freljordian things. Like yeah. the the campaign against the barbarians was like Noxus and the Freljord, like Trindamir's the king of the barbarian tribes. I feel like the fact that they were being pushed in by barbarians, like, you're right next to Nox, you're nowhere near you fucking... Know, <laughs> I will say, it could certainly be Freljordians in the way that Vikings would just sail the coast, right, came down and raided. And you know what? If they... I know Aatrox used to be tied to Trindamir. If they're still doing that, then maybe Aatrox did some shit in the north and it caused like a weird mass migration. That's... 
You know, that's something that or, happens, right? I got the history. Like, come on, or, man, that, that, that should happen. A big storm came and lifted <laughs> up all the bodies. Yeah, they, they wicked witch of the Wested <laughs> themselves down to the fucking, you know. <laughs> It's possible. I just would like a little more detail for something that's like, this causes so much fucking like action for a major. I almost said Atreus. No, that's his name. I almost said Atreus. Atreus. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> or like, okay, the idea that Pantheon is killed. Because I think when we, in that, that Aurelian soul story, something we saw was that like, Pantheon's like, there's multiple hosts of Pantheon, I guess, across whatever universe this exists in. So like, does that mean they all just died? Like, that's a hell of a fucking thing. Like, what does that mean for the constellation to be, like, you know, hewn from the sky? Because it's cool, but... Do people notice? Do you think, like, there's the, the <laughs> Sailors get lost. Joe and, like... <laughs> right, now Atreus looks like a fucking dumbass with this constellation on his chest. People are like, what's that? Like, I swear to God, it used to be in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Okay, a little dipper. We got the big dipper. We don't need another <laughs> one, my friend. <laughs> All right. Uh, any final thoughts on the bio? Because we're 31 minutes I in. Know. Okay. Yeah, I know. But I have one more line here. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, in, unless you know John, it's hard to tell when John's drunk. <laughs> but he's there, baby. <laughs> this is usually my specialty when recording. He knew from their cries, from the overwhelming stench of blood, they faced Aatrox. Do you think their cries were just like, oh no, it's a <laughs> trance? And they just tried to make this sound cool. <laughs> wow, John. That was good. It was the stench of blood. Okay. Aatrox smells. <laughs> He's a bloody boy. <laughs> like blood. <laughs> what do you think he smells like? I guess he smells like blood. Yeah. Iron. Like a whatever. hint of iron, iron in there. Like I, I, I hope he smells like gingerbread. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's that's the uh, oh god, what do they call them? Baker Aatrox. Ba- no. ba- oh. Bake Trox. Bake Trox. Bake Trox. Bake Trox. Bay Life. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think of the uh, what do they call the Christmas skins? Oh, the oh, the snow down ones. Uh, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Can we get a gingerbread Aatrox? <laughs> sure. All right. Any anybody else besides John have any more thoughts on the bio? I'm out. I just want to express my displeasure that we covered Aatrox first and most of his lores and Pantheon story. Okay. Bullshit. Yeah, I kind of mm-hmm. agree. Um, it's a good jumping off point. Get it? Because it was ultimate. Uh, <laughs> for, like, adventures and stories and shit. And, um, like I said, I had some questions around, like, why did he take Pantheon's name? That seems really weird. But I think it gets kind of answered in his color story. So. Yeah. I, I, I give him a pass. <laughs> uh Speaking of, do okay. we want to jump into that then? Sure. Sure. So this is the one that's linked. It's called For Those Who Have Fallen. It's by, also by David Thank Slagle. Um, it's from Pantheon's perspective. As we just learned, Targon is on the southern continent to the west of Shirima. So Pantheon is in <laughs> Narimazeth. Uh, nailed it. Uh, it's, uh, I can never say it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you got to just like, it's like a leap of faith. Um that's yeah. where the first sun disc was. It's like was. saying war, war shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to try that one again? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt it. I do not. <laughs> Worcester. Worcester. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, what's he doing? The Raharak came because there's this power that's growing there, and they're investigating it, and Pantheon shows up, and they're getting their asses kicked by... They don't ever say it out loud, but it's Zareth. Zareth is kicking their, them around. And, uh, oh my god, I wish they would have said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I spoilers, no I guess. What's happening in this whole fucking story? <laughs> I was like trying to power read it while taking care of the baby. And I was like, no worries, they're very so subtle they, about they don't, it. Yeah, they don't specify. They, they don't they, say there is they name say, at any point. They say that it's an There's ascended no as in here. to a darken, so that narrows it down to like four people. And then, I thought it was some ascended I never knew and, about. I don't know. And then they say they mention the chains. They mention the the rock that is their their body, the ruined rock you know, that is their it, body. You're and making then, me sound like a fucking moron now. What? We don't have to give you all the Zareth hints, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying all the hint that. instead of But I I right. will say the story makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's finding something. You know, it could be it's, 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 it could be a lot of things. <laughs> And you'd be he's forgiving for Zareth. thinking it okay. was not Sarah. Shut up. 
uh, they're fighting. He starts fighting it, and kind of during a lull, um, he sees this like injured Raharak soldier who's like she's kind of like desperate, and she's asking him like if he's an aspect because she's got with her dead friend, and she's kind of he can see in her eyes that she hopes he'll be able to like save them, save you know this person who's dying or dead. But he doesn't reply, and instead he just kind of just starts trying to inspire the Raharak to fight, and he starts getting back into it with Zareth. But he gets kind of overwhelmed, and his strength kind of fails. Um, and also, like, the magic and, like, his weapon kind of dies out, and his helmet gets knocked off, and for the first time, all these soldiers can, like, see he's not an aspect or anything. He's just a dude. Uh, <laughs> but that same injured Raharak kind of comes over and shields him from this blow from Zareth, and as she's, like, right before she dies, she gives him her name, which is Azos. Is that how we all would say it? Uh, yeah, I really struggled. I felt bad because they really make a big deal about her name. Yeah. And in my head, it was like, Asus. Uh, <laughs> I said it as Asosi because. Mm. Asosi, okay. I like that better. I like that. You know, That's I'm a good chant for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asosi. Yeah. It's kind of Greek ish, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's a really oh, okay. good, that's oh, a good way to go. think about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, now, y'all can give me your interpretation because it seems like Pantheon's <laughs> almost like killed because like everything just kind of goes to darkness um, for him. But he like Nocturnal. he's he just closes his eyes, <laughs> you know, and he's like, "Oh, it's dark." Oh, <laughs> he <shit."> blinked. <laughs> he, got, he got really dramatic about a blink. His helmet <laughs> fell over his eyes like Lulu, and he's like, "Oh, I'm blind." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, but he like Adorable. he feels the pain in his scar, and here he's reminded of all these like defining moments, all these like many of which were like failures. Um, <laughs> you know how he always came the back, Patriots, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and he, he, you know, in the sacrament, he thinks about like the hell it would have been for nothing if it weren't for his oath. So we kind of comes back to it, and he gathers up the Raharak rock and inspires them to fight, and uh, like their courage and Azos's courage. Like one, of the, even though at this point the Pantheon constellation is still out, it says in the bio at the very end that it's it's back to life. But in this story, it's still out. But a single star in it for a moment like blazes super bright, and they all are inspired to go fight Zareth, um, and they yell out Azos's name, like, and that's the rallying cry. And if you're my dumbass, you were like, "Wow, they would just went and kill that aspect." <laughs> <laughs> it's a but now, now knowing it's Zareth, they just saw. I guess this fight's still happening. Died. I don't know what happened. We can all agree that that's they how this ended, died. right? There's no way any of them made it out except for Atreus. <laughs> I mean, Pantheon. realistically, yeah, yeah, probably. But they but ended this on the classic <laughs> riot freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see the book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why we'll never see the follow up to this. Frankly, I would with Legends of Runeterra. I know Zareth is getting some more followers and stuff, so maybe you just tweak this and rewrite it so it's not Zareth. This is just like that Ringo situation from a uh, Nars <laughs> story. It's like it doesn't say it's Zareth, so it could be anybody or anything. You know? If you're me, it was just anybody. Yeah, see, <laughs> power of imagination. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're all probably fucking dead. Yeah, I have some thoughts about this. Oh, okay, oh, yeah, great. Go. This is kind of come as a surprise. To <laughs> give us more of those <laughs> <laughs> mead-filled hot takes. Meaty hot takes. <laughs> hey. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't like isn't part of Atreus's whole thing, his whole anger at the gods, like, you know, you guys are having your wars, and it's all the normal people around you that are dying as a result of it. Um... What the fuck's he doing here? Why does he bring... What the hell are his army people doing here? It specifically mentions that they had their shields up and their swords up, and, like, Zareth was just like, pew, 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 and just fucking melted <laughs> their weapons. Like, why even bring them here? Well, they don't oh, necessarily... You, you are now one of the gods who is <laughs> killing the people around you in your random-ass fight against other gods. I assume that they do not work under his directive, and that he runs... He's like an independent individual at this point. Right? <laughs> I mean, he's a contractor. He, kind of, <laughs> he's just I guess. A mercenary. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a superhero, who, you know, who came in to save these guys' dicks because like they work for the Solari, right? So they would follow under like this is probably Leona's fault, like so many things, right? Like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm just joking. But I, I assume like the Raharak <laughs> at this point work under some sort of Solari leadership, and they were sent out because it's some, like. It mentions also early that, like, their power is waning, and I don't know if it's to do with, like, the Sun Disk thing, you know, the Ascended are super tied to, like, the power of Targon, or if it's some other bullshit, but 
I think because at this point in the story, there, uh, or in this point in like time, um, the sun is starting to wane and the yeah. Lunari's time is coming. Yeah, that's kind of what I assume. That's my read on From, like, it. Like the Ophelios, I think, is where they talk about that specifically. Yeah. But, um, so it seems like this is maybe like almost a desperation thing. Where, like, hey, there's some weird power out here and we're getting a little desperate, so we're going to send out 50 people to go check it out. And Atreus is just like, I know this is going to be a fucking problem. And it's an ascendant, so he's super interested anyway. I don't know. I didn't put the blame on his on him, <laughs> on him for that one anyway. Do you know what's funny? When I first started reading this story, when I was thinking that the aspect was a champion, <laughs> because I did have that thought at first, because of the way they were talking about how this this aspect was so evil and villainous and was trying to like destroy everything, I thought it was Azir. You know, For there a is second, a second. I thought he was fighting Azir. There is a bit where like he stabs Zara or whoever with the spear, and it comes back, and there's, no, <laughs> there's like only sand on it. There's like no blood exactly. or anything. Yeah. I honestly thought it was Azir for a second, and I was like, oh, okay, I don't think it's Azir. But that I I do really enjoy that about myself. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> asshole trying to kill people. That I still think I fucking, still think the villain is Azir. Azir every time. Yeah, I think if you move this out of like Nerimazef and like just made it a lot more vague. That could be a really interesting twist where, like, he would have incentive to fight both of them, frankly. And it's like, you yeah, don't yeah. really know because the action pieces are kind of like vague. There's not a lot of description anyway. So you just get rid of some references to energy blasts and you're golden. You know? <laughs> Listen, energy blasts could be anything. Sure. It's terrifying. I didn't know. Right. I can't believe I didn't think about Zareth once this whole fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the story, Kyle? How you um, doing? I like portions of it i like the portion of like i guess when he like rallies everyone to fight like on the yeah. aspect of fighting zareth i'm not too keen on because i think zareth would absolutely body everybody there <laughs> um <laughs> including right. atreus because <laughs> like he's just a he doesn't have the god yeah, he's just anymore. a dude <laughs> um <laughs> yeah I'll melt him but i like i think part of it too is like Atreus always just tends to show up in places. I think there's another story for him where he's just like chilling, waiting for these barbarians to come through. And everyone just thinks he's like this madman that's like walking around. He's basically like an oracle, I guess, that just moseys his way different places and he's like, hey, <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> and starts standing Sounds up. like an angry drunk. <laughs> yeah. Like 2 a.m. just wandering the streets. Right. That was very hey, New Jersey. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> I gotta go to Wawa. <laughs> I'm from Jersey. I can make fun of Jersey people. <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, yeah. That's yeah. fair. That made him sound like Jax. Him just wandering around fighting people. Yeah. So without the, he's Jax without the eggs. Eggless Cute without Jax. the e. <laughs> Yeah, in Runeterra, he's kind of like that, honestly, because he's going around collecting a cadre of warriors to fight a fucking demon. So, you know, that's pretty Jaxy. Yeah, yeah. Jaxy. <laughs> Jax Jaxy, Jaxy. <laughs> but um, Jax I think kind of like what you're saying about them depicting him as like a normal dude. I do like a couple of the ways he describes like having the magic. Like he's like ulting in at the start, and he's like saying how <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really feel like I flew here. It just kind of feels like I fell. Um, or yeah. like he's trying to like use the spear and it's like his mu- talks about how his like his muscles are straining just to bear like the weight of the magic. So like that's kind of neat. I kind of like some of that. Like it's something yeah, almost out do, of his control. They do a good job of describing <clears throat> like what it would be like to be just a regular dude controlling this god magic cause mm-hmm. that he still possesses. Which I don't know if we talked about that um, in his bio that he does still have. Some of Pantheon's he got the magic. Magic, yeah. Got the magic in me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to kind of come and go. Like it, it's maybe it's significant effort, or it's like almost driven yeah. by his will. Yeah. I don't know. These st- Spider-Man three. <laughs> some powers just coming. I think they also. He needs to I dance. Think they also mentioned that um, when he's grabbing the spear back to him after he's like thrown it or something, what Associates trying to like see so much of like his aspect powers is he's like what she so desperately sees she sees it but I don't understand it he's just <laughs> like I just grabbed the spear back that's it we're here <laughs> well, this is just a Thursday for me I don't know <laughs> <laughs> 
Good. Yeah, he kind of like he can see in them like the the need that people sometimes like have to like like why people would follow the aspects even when they like kind of do crazy shit sometimes. It's kind of how I kind of saw it. But um Yeah, I think so I did mention before that like the idea of why does he call himself Pantheon and I think here the idea kind of seems to be positing is that he is like a pantheon of those who have like humans who have sacrificed like for him and for the yeah, Runeterra, right? So like that's the pantheon, I guess. Which is like okay, I like that idea enough and uh he doesn't go by a reclaiming pantheon yeah right taking it back <laughs> take back the pant <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and also she's like oh you're atreus aren't you and he's like no he's he's dead so that's kind of the answer as to why he doesn't just go by that name and i'm like okay that's reasonable to me from a, a character perspective this stuff always makes me laugh because the idea of a pantheon 1v1ing in azareth and struggling at all. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, oh, look, the shield's up. I guess I'm immune to all of Zareth's yeah, abilities. I'm just going to jump on cool. the Zareth and fucking three-shot yeah, him. <laughs> passive and stack, and then he'd block whatever, <laughs> including turrets. <laughs> yeah, where's the turret diving scene? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it's like Oriana. Oriana. <laughs> Oriana. Oh, man. Yeah. Mark, I think I hear your daughter screaming. Do you really? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. No, it's okay. It's fine to be recording. I'm just. <laughs> I know. I feel uh, bad. Poor, poor baby. Yeah, she's okay. She's having. She's having a day. <laughs> it's she's having a day. A day. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate Sarah looking after her for the, the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. Next up, we jump. got the spear of Targon, right? Uh, yeah. That's yeah, we do that one. one. In order. Yeah, this is the one that was released this year. Or? Um, this oh no, that was in battle. Okay. Yeah, this is an older one. This is the yeah, one that's the not one. linked, but is on universe. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. Anthony Reynolds, Lene. Yeah, we mentioned it a few times. I think this one was written before he got his update, uh, like his I big visual so. update. Um, yeah, I think so this was before the pieces of video it. release of him like standing on Targon with the comet Aurelian Soul coming down. Right. Oh yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Right when he has returned, yeah. prepared. That makes sense. Yeah. Because okay. they, they they directly tease that at the end of this. Eh, yeah. I didn't catch that. <laughs> Look at that. People putting pieces together. Yeah. <laughs> we need See, you to look, come I'm help us figure this shit out. <laughs> who doesn't catch things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a little action piece. A band of raiders have come up to the base of Targon, and a lone figure um, tells them to turn back. But the leader, who's from Targon originally, is like, whatever. Kill this guy. And this lone figure, Pantheon, uh, starts killing off these these invaders just effortless, effortless, really easy. <laughs> <laughs> easy peasy. I I got tripped up there at the at the, <laughs> the last hour, but um, <laughs> while he's fighting, the clouds part, and the leader can kind of see this guy isn't just any ordinary fighter. He's covered in like he can see the cosmic radiance on him, and he kind of remembers the stories of Azbex. He's like, oh, I think we fucked up. Um, Pantheon just kind of kills and dr- or drives off the rest and uh, our leader kind of whips a pistol at him Pantheon matrixes the, the shot you know he keep dodges it um, and he knocks the guy off the horse and, and the leader as he's on the ground kind of recognizes Atreus like you know he's like hey Atreus I remember you um, and then in response he gets stabbed through the chest and Pantheon's like I'm Pantheon bitch <laughs> and then he leaves oh he That's sees exactly a comet in the sky yeah. <laughs> <laughs> word for comet. word <laughs> I'm Pantheon, bitch. Look at that star. <laughs> <laughs> he's not scarred yet because he's still Pantheon. He, or like star. Old, he's yeah. a star, oh, Mark. Star. Look at that star. <laughs> Stars and scars. The Pantheon story. <laughs> <laughs> That's his romance novel <laughs> title. <laughs> Stars and scars. Yeah, he sees a star in the sky. And he's like, oh, it's time. So he starts heading back up the mountain. And that's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> now, I guess there's there's some subtext here, which, again, is not explicitly spelled out anywhere in the story. It mentions that the barbarians are here to get to the temple of the seer. Mm. Um, the seer, in this case, is Soraka. Oh. Because um, I remember I read through it originally and was like, why the hell is Pantheon just, like, guarding this random-ass temple? Like, it seems kind of above his pay grade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I can see why he would want, you know, more to to keep her a bit safe. Yeah, yeah, they want her blood. He even says they're here for the blood of this, 
this year. I wonder yeah. if that's if this is still canon. I don't know what's going on with Soraka these days. So who knows? I don't know. We're still only on P. I have no yeah. idea what Soraka's got going on. Uh, so, hot tip for these barbarians. Oh, okay. Uh, rule rule of one. <laughs> if you're if you're an army of fifty and you're up against an army of twenty five, you're gonna win because you're fifty against twenty five. You got that in the bag. If you're an army of fifty and there's one person there Run. who's like, I'm willing to fight you. <laughs> pack it up. You're gonna lose that fight. <laughs> so turn around, and go home. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> that, would, that would have been really funny. <laughs> That's how this story ended. I wouldn't have minded that actually. That would have been great if they're like, "Oh, this one guy is willing to fight fifty of us." All right, bye. No, not <laughs> bye. This is Rintera, son. I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> I'm not a fucking idiot. It's, I've funny, been my whole life. it's funny that you said when you were describing it that they were like, oh, right, uh, ascended. We fucked up. It's Runeterra. Do you guys not realize what's happening? Right. It didn't need to have been an ascended. It could have been a it demon. It could have been literally it anything. It could have been a celestial. It could have been just Jax. He probably still would have won that fight. <laughs> you mean you're going to lose. Like, if just, you're a normal ass yeah, dude who needs yeah. to travel in a pack of 50, it could be 50, a fucking cat. You're going to lose most fights. <laughs> A cat, yeah. It, it could have been a person that's somehow been alive for 300 years and we don't know why or how. A little baby or, child. More likely, it could have been LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> we just we still don't know what was it. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. I think after the first couple, most everybody there probably wouldn't like. I always this. wonder that about movies when like one person is like just you just saw like five people get torn apart by someone like who were you that you're like i got this right i got this with my pistol i really <laughs> appreciate it in movies after the first few people die that like the remaining henchmen are like nah man i'm not paid enough for yeah i got iron go. man three didn't they do that shit <laughs> maybe oh, I don't people got iron man destroyed three. by yeah. iron man and then like this guy was like Hey man, I just like found this job on Craigslist oh, or some yeah. shit. I'm out. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, I don't remember. I saw it in the theater and never again. This always reminds me of like that one web comic where like those two boxers were facing each other and one was like, Kame, Hame, and the other one was like, I forfeit. <laughs> and then in like a post game interview, it was like, I know he probably couldn't have done it. But I'm not gonna sit here and fuck around and find out. <laughs> this is reminding me of a really old Kevin Hart bit. Because <laughs> I used to watch stand-up comic like comedy all the time before Kevin Hart was like really famous. Uh, he had a special where he talked about he was gonna fight a guy in a parking lot, and the guy slapped both of his knees like one at a time, and then he was like, no. <laughs> I think I should have done that in the story. I'm not gonna fight somebody who slaps both their knees. <laughs> Starts to do that like Hawaiian exactly like dance or whatever of war, and you're just no, I'm not, not, I'm not dealing with this right now. Uh, Pantheon. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's not a lot to say about this one. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's just definitely the action piece that every fighter needs. It was like it, it didn't do much. It was nothing wrong with it. Nothing against Anthony Reynolds today. Um, it was just uh an old color story it felt yeah. like an older color story for sure maybe the very end where the guy like recognizes him is a nice little bit yeah you know? yeah it's probably not bad it's just it's just it doesn't really fit anymore yeah for sure yeah. all right next up on canon entries that are canon no honey we've got no rise of the sentinel honey no it's oh fuck <laughs> i just assume we, we just kind of not even i didn't even it. read anything about this <laughs> i just, skipped over I'll this just, completely I didn't, I didn't either, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> i'll just real quick go over his part of the story so atreus and viego are fighting near the peak of mount targon atreus loses again <laughs> and in what seems to be par for the course for him gets stabbed in the chest damn uh Viego ruins him and reawakens the aspect of war. That just, I don't know if I'm a pervert, but that just ruins <laughs> <laughs> entirely. Viego ruins him. It's very In Dinka stars K. and scars. <laughs> uh, so the aspect of war is reawakened and uh, summons an avalanche on top of the Sentinels. Uh, they get out of it and make it to the peak to stop Viego. And then Pantheon summons a Wraith army. 
Um, but then Diana defeats the Wraith army and knocks Pantheon off the mountain. And then later, on the Shadow Isles, Pantheon, Draven, Karma, and Misfortune, and Shavana hold the group at bay. Or, if you're watching the cinematic, just Pantheon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say just Pantheon. Want- Give him a win. <laughs> Not to bitch about Rise of the Sentinels again. But, um... Atreus being taken over by Pantheon again is such a big fucking deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just so glossed over. I think we did talk about how the next story is in Battle Broken, which is when he gets his body back again, and it actually is made a big deal, which is, I guess, it rectifies it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it still I mean, doesn't explain why. Uh, you know, at the end of this whole thing what exactly happened to all the ruined champions that were there just trying to <laughs> kill all the people after they had the mist pulled out of them were all the sentinels just like alright we're cool now <laughs> we good look at my eyes look especially at my Miss eyes. Fortune who they know knowingly submitted <laughs> yeah <laughs> for funsies <laughs> well, like you'd have a conversation you know you would make them do the alphabet backwards once <laughs> like you know yeah, I'm no longer uh, I'm sober I swear <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, it um, it really is crazy to think about. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess they really needed thought Pantheon skins would sell, but goddamn, right? Like, I hate that skin. They don't just. I mean, I I I don't play him, but I certainly wouldn't use it. But even if it was a great skin, you know what I mean? I pride myself it's having like, all the Pantheon skins. That I never touched that one. Well, you know, I mean, you gotta have principles, yeah. right? You gotta, yeah. Until they until they release one where you have to get gold for like ranked, I'm good. As soon as they do that, I'm screwed. I think you'll rise to the challenge. You must fight, man. Just think Pantheon. Yeah. Pantheon. Yeah. Pantheon. <laughs> Fifty game lose streak. Damn. All right, one more. <laughs> you doing Atreus so proud on that one? So long as you always queue back up, you know you're. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but, um, we played three arams last night and lost all of them and i was like i never play league anymore i rarely get the chance to and i was like i queued up for the first time in a month and riot was like here's three losses <laughs> welcome back <laughs> you remember why you love this game so much yeah right. the first one i was still like having a good time but by the third one i was like i'm going to bed <laughs> I'm not even tired. i didn't even do this it's four in the afternoon i'm going to bed <laughs> Yeah, and rise of the bedtime, sentinels really blew 10 PM. it. <laughs> well, that's a very appropriate bedtime. I Thank can sympathize. You. That's why I don't fuck, I don't play fucking league anymore anymore. <laughs> At least not for the moment, anyway. I'm too tired. But um, yeah, rise of the sentinels really sucks. <laughs> like, even more so now that I've got the full context. <laughs> it's like, man, that really they really fuck they really. Anyway, though, fuck, fuck rise of the fuck sentinels. <laughs> can we? Uh. I, I always like think like oh maybe we'll look back on it one day and realize it wasn't as bad as we thought it was but then every time I'm reminded I'm like god it's worse than I remembered yeah, yeah. yeah. it's Honestly. just because the more I learn like reading Pantheon's bio now like they uh, but, like, um, <laughs> it's just it's such a big thing him fighting off Pantheon and, and becoming himself again so to just willy nilly be like oh yeah Pantheon's back and then like, like the hand wave one. away as like Oh, but no, Viego took it away when he was, uh, you know, conquered too, so we're good. See, that's the thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. The thing that I, the sense I get from it always is that they just made the Pantheon skin, and then someone was like, hey, so, like, what's the deal with Pantheon coming back? And they said, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't read the lore. Why? What happened? <laughs> what do you mean? He's Pantheon. And then they'd be like, oh, fuck. Um, okay, like, yeah. And then I'm sure they're just like, how do we get it back to, like, he's good again? You know what I mean? They yeah. released his prestige skin. That's how, which we'll get to a little bit later. <laughs> oh, great. Can't okay, cool. Wait. Cool. All right. So, do we want to move on to the final story then? Are we done with Rise? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank final God. One in Battle <laughs> Broken by L.J. Goulding. It is a long story. Um, it's really good if you want to, like. You're going to read one Pantheon story. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Make it. Make it this one. If you kind of want a good feeling about what um, Atreus is like, I think this is a good story. And what his life was like before this and all of that. Yeah. Know? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So it, it, it opens with a little missive. I don't remember who it's by, but it's just kind of talking about like, hey, the summary of it is just like, hey, aspects like 
are an alien intelligence that work to their own ends and no matter what they do we can never it's always like something that's outside of our realm of knowing right I don't remember who it's by um, but it opens on Eula um, and she is at her homestead with a younger woman whose name I did not write down um, ha, hip, you know, Hane like, or something like that Hane Hane ah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah big H so <laughs> Uh, they're 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 starting the day. They're talking about mead. Funny enough, they're they're <laughs> figuring out how to fix the mead a little bit. And there's a figure coming towards the house, and uh, Eula kind of goes out to go meet him, and is also very immediately to, to Big H, like, "Hey, um, go get the sword. Go get Pilus' sword." Uh, well, she says, "My husband." I don't think she ever calls him Pilus in that opening bit. Anyway, as she's approaching, she's kind of hailing him, and she's very quickly being like, "You know, my husband Pilus was a rock rock. He was well regarded. I have a you know something from the Chancellery, so don't fuck with me." Um, and the guy keeps coming, so she's like, "Hannah's coming out with a sword," and then she sees that this guy's all tattered. He's he's like worn down completely. One of his shoes, his sandals, is like just dragging like by a toe, uh, and it's it's <laughs> it's Atreus. And before anything can happen, he just faints and collapses, and he's out for like four days. And she wakes up to a fire in the house, and she's running around and she's trying to find Big H. Big H has gone to the market, and she comes down, and there's <laughs> <laughs> there's Atreus burning the bread in the the kitchen. Um, and she goes and she kind of like scolds him and then puts it out, helps him put it out. And uh, um, he's very quiet. He's very reserved. And he starts like, I think she does, does he even, I don't remember the exact, uh, my, my notes on this one are a little fuzzy because I also was doing some baby stuff today. Um, but I know at some <laughs> point she kind of like reached, he, he kind of talks about like, he unveils to her that like, here's what happened. Is that like Pantheon came back, whatever, so, you know, Viego brought it back out of me. And she goes to like comfort him and he like freaks out. He like shies away backs up backs into the wall and like almost gets into like a fetal position and like starts like crying and she starts cr- like crying at seeing what's happened to him and they just have a cry sesh for like a long time <laughs> eventually they kind of come out of it and i think they start talking to it and what he kind of comes to is saying i need you to be able to tell me that i can quit i don't have to do this anymore and that like turns her on an on, like in an instant she starts getting like mad and i'm talking about like you know pilots went up with you he died with you I didn't get to see my husband when he died. You got to be there with him because he believed in you. So you don't get to fucking quit, right? Um, and she just kind of like scolds him and just kind of reminds him, tries to remind him of like all the, what he's done and what's kind of going on. Tells him about like, hey, we have this little kid with us. Timas, I think was his name. I just called him Thomas. Little Timmy? <laughs> Tiny yeah, Tim? I, was, I think I also just said Thomas. Tommy Tom. <laughs> They've got Tiny Tim with them. Uh, Tiny Tim and Big H. <laughs> Big H and Tiny Tim. <laughs> She's got Tiny Tim, and it's been told before that he was an orphan, and she kind of says, hey, the Raharat killed his entire village, because they're not just killing Lunari anymore, they're killing people they think are harboring Lunari, and shit's going fucking wild. So if you want to just leave and quit, you know, he, you know he'll be the one who sits there and fights in your stead, right? Because that's just the only thing he's destined for. Um, and she just leaves, and she goes out with Tiny Tim, just because you can't be in the situation, comes back, Atreus is gone, he's left her a note, which she purposefully does not read, and instead sets to burn, with the hope that, you know what, He'll be back and he can tell me himself. Um, but Eva, until then, she sharpens that fucking sword. <laughs> yeah, this is a good. There's a lot of emotions in this one. Mm-hmm. A lot of good character stuff. Yeah, from I both love the opening blurb here, like, like the the little like text blurb from it was like some some high priest or some shit. It's, yeah, it's but, from uh, some work. Okay. It's like cited as from some work, but I don't my yeah. no matter who. But it definitely makes the Celestials sound way more like demons than gods in how they wrote it. Like, they say specifically, in spite of all their heavenly power, they had descended from the firmament of the Celestial Realm, yet were still unable to cross over into Runeterra unaided. And this was something for which they would be willing to bargain most dearly, enough to use our own worst natures against us, enough to betray the Golden Sun itself. Like that's some demon shit right there. That's not- <laughs> you you are absolutely correct. That's a really good uh, comparison. <clears throat> so apparently, it's ooh, supposed to be a quote from "Tribe of the Last Sun" by the higher arch Malgurza of Helia, or Helia. Ooh, you're right. It. it was Helia. Now Helia is interesting because that's where the Blessed Isles were. Right? It was Helia? Mm, right. Yeah. And those are the academics. You should trust. Yeah, them. I was gonna say they're the ones who like big con. Uh, they got together with a bunch of different like like Buru and like uh, Vasai and just all these sorts of people who seem to have a lot of they know a lot of what's going on with like the metaphysics of of Runeterra 
know what I mean? That's really interesting. Yeah. Viego really fucked up that gathering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Viego fuck something up? <laughs> oh my god. Did you say he ruined <laughs> it, perhaps? <laughs> Yeah, I, like you said, a lot of lot of um, uh, emotional stuff going on here, um, which I really like from both Eula, like internally, because she's our perspective character. Um, I thought they did a really good job with her, and then Atreus. Yeah. Like I really, I just really liked that. I guess I liked the way he kind of carried himself as being very. He was very almost like timid, you know. He was very reserved. He's yeah. very quiet. Um, and where it's like, yeah, you to- if you told me that guy was like processing something that was very traumatic that he had just come out of i would completely believe you based on how he's acting well you don't need to like tell me hey this is what's going on with him it just reads and how he's written here which is neat for a league character i guess is my broader like what makes it interesting to me you know yeah like it makes me wonder if they if pantheon was specifically chosen to be ruined so they could do a story like this or whether like they thought of the connection after the fact but like, it's a very good look at the lasting ramifications of the ruination that we don't really get to see in a lot of other stories. Um, and I think like, I mean, we talk about the Sentinels of Light event just being a shit show that is unredeemable, <laughs> but the story itself, like, I think can be redeemed if enough more of these stories are told, I think. Yeah, or at the very least, like, I mean, these are, these are this is very good and things like this are very good. And even if we... We just kind of have to accept that that original, the things that they, they spawned them, sent Rise of the Sentinels, isn't good. And that's okay, you know. So, I mean, you know, Institute of Worship wasn't very good, but, you know, here we are. We got there in the end, you know. So, it's like... How dare you? <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I, I like this a lot. I had a lot of moments. Like, oh. Uh, no, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I had a lot of moments in here where I was, like, really uh, empathizing with uh, with Eula when she was making the mead and she's like it's fine maybe it'll age into something better i was like oh it's like me (laughs) 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 and then they said her knees and elbows creaked as she went but her knees and elbows always creaked so she'd given up on remarking on it years ago it's like oh my god it was me (laughs) she got the frozen shoulder i really uh, it's really standing out when you're trying to silently carry a baby without waking her and put her down and your bones are cracking the entire time. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, please. Sometimes she'll flinch awake a little bit because my fucking knees are popping as I try to walk her down the fucking hallway. I'm like, I'm sorry I had you late in life. I'm old as shit, girl. <laughs> I gotta put the baby down. I gotta do my stretches. Get all the pops out. I know. <laughs> That's funny. I like the way she interacted with uh, Tiny Tim, where he, like he really wants to drink that mead, and she's kind of like playing ar- like around it. She's like, "Oh, you want some of this stew?" You know, and she kind of has to just be like, "All right, Tiny Tim, you, you, trust me, you'll be good when you're older." But you can, you you just don't get any now. Sometimes the way you got to be with kids, you know, it's like, no, yeah. you can't have she mead. Specifically says. Look, yeah. my boy, some of the best things that grown-ups enjoy happen in the dark, all right? <laughs> yeah. One day when you're older and taller, you'll understand that. <laughs> sex. Yeah, John literally wrote hee-hee sex <laughs> in his notes, in case anyone wanted <laughs> With a period at the end of hee-hee period sex. I you prefer to think of it as <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it would it would have extra ease if it were hee hee. <laughs> you know, I would tee hee over a hee hee any day. <laughs> I'm sorry. You need to publish your notes. I want them like canonized. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I think my oh, favorite oh. part of the story was uh, the quote where it's like, "I told you last time you were here, you will never be a baker." And I'm like, right. "This is bullshit." <laughs> he has a skin for that, but <laughs> he does. But I was like, his hopes and he dreams do just got he puts ruined. His mind too. <laughs> Could you imagine? That's like what he wanted to do after all of this was yeah. over. And then he was like, "Oh, I guess I'll go kill more people." <laughs> yeah. just I'll go up the mountain a third time. Sure. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, okay. Which I mean, technically does because oh, I think the call heard. comes after this. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah she really came out here like fucking uh, Paul from Great British Pig. 
right? <laughs> Paul no Hollywood. Fucking, no fucking handshake for Pantheon. <laughs> You've got a soggy bottom, Pantheon. <laughs> oh, <works. laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Which I, Maybe that's the hardest battle he fights. I really like that they took the, into the fact that after the ruination, he was like he was broken mentally from ha- yeah. Oh, yeah. having yes. to fight Pantheon off again, like in like his like mind and body was nice but like yeah i don't know i felt it like kind of i felt real bad for him when he was getting yelled at i'm like this guy just wants it to be over he's been through a lot and this lady's like you don't get to do that i'm like okay all right hold on (laughs) yeah man real visceral reaction to eula in that scene yeah i i I completely agree i think a a little detail i thought was interesting is that she kind of notes in the way that like the look on his face um, it's not just like the physical exertion or like violence they sustained, but the fact that he probably had to fight people who were like innocents or like she says like were were something like was anyone he even fought an enemy in that way where it's like oh man it's a lot of heavy shit right if you think about what he yeah. actually had to go do like literally right I, I I guess from her perspective though like she and her husband made this choice to go up there and to be these people and. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of get it from her perspective a little bit. Yeah, no, I um, I, I, she was like, "Hey, you kind of, you kind of fucking signed up for this, bro. You got, yeah, you got to get up." Like I think she was. I, I could be wrong, but I thought she was even staunchly opposed to the whole, the whole thing. Yeah, she tried to like, convince well, Pilus not to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? But these these connections are always what make us feel connected to champions. So I, I like that he went back here. Um, to his his best friend's, you know, widowed wife. It it's very powerful. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got a quote about him this farm too. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is well, he you know, has, uh, he um he doesn't know about the war between the Solari and Lunari. When he comes back, he's yeah. like, oh "What God. war are you talking about?" Because <laughs> he's been gone apparently for like six years since he came back. Oh. Yeah, Poor just kind of out of the yeah, world. No yeah. And he's like, what are they fighting about? <laughs> <laughs> the same son? Why? <laughs> it's like a three-hour explanation. She's like... <laughs> hmm. well, yeah, and like, again, I don't know if this was intentional. I mean, this, not to bring the mood down. <laughs> <laughs> bring it down, honey. Bring but the mood down. I, I guess trigger warning for, for sexual assault, but like, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but I feel like this story did like such a good job at capturing like the aftermath of sexual abuse too like with the the complete feeling of like helplessness when it's happening and like the lost feeling of power afterwards and like feeling like everything's stacked against you and wanting to give up and then like even the even so far as like the anger that people feel at you (laughs) after you kind of uh come out with all of it it's like Again, like, not sure if it was an an intentional thing or, like, just purely coincidental, but, like, I I had, like, a very strong visceral reaction to, like, this whole section of this story. Sure. I, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know about intentional either, but it was a read that I certainly also felt at times. I think specifically with how, when he has that reaction to her touch, where he, he trips, like, he backs up so hard, he, like, falls back over a bench curls up and then just keeps repeating like don't touch me and it's like you know that yeah you know i don't know if it's intentional like i said or if it's just like it works as a reading but i i think that's could be there yeah i mean i think the intention was to convey the experience of someone controlling your body in a way that you did not consent to yeah which you know that's the same yeah and they definitely they definitely did a did a good did a good job in hitting those those um emotions yeah and yeah, sort of what you go through there yeah it's a sad story i mean you know it's like it's it's not you it bringing is, the mood a, down it's just a it's a heavy story um, yeah like we're making jokes and we're talking about how good the story is it is a very sad story <laughs> ultimately <laughs> yeah but I like it. I like things that are very sad. Like I said, for league lore, you know, like, do you want this or do you want, like, another, like, and then he killed 30 people and, you know, whatever. Like, it's like, 
those are fun, <laughs> right? But I need some of these sometimes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like those were those were the all of the Pantheon specific ones. Pantheon does show up in a bunch of other stories. Um, he shows up in Halfway Between the Stars and Earth by uh, Katie Coronas, which is a Soraka story where she just kind of men- mentions Pantheon, Diana, and Leona. Um, because there's like this this girl who's like running from her family and she's trying to prove them wrong because they think she's like weak. So she's like, I'm gonna climb Mount Targon. I'll show them. And she's like, All right, you gotta know. Like Pantheon, Diana, and Leona, like they chose Targon with their soul, and Targon chose them back. You're not choosing Targon, and it's not gonna choose you back. <laughs> Uh, and then he shows up in Meet Zoe by Odin Austin Schaefer, where guards approach Zoe, and she makes a note that their weapons look just like Pantheon's. Hmm. Uh, and then, obviously, the Darkened Blade, the Aatrox bio, also by Odin Austin Schaefer, where he mentions the aspect of war is rallying people to fight back against the Darken, while the aspect of Twilight is teaching the people how to bind them to weapons. Um, then we've got The Mountain by Graham McNeil, which is for no champion this was actually just uh when they were relaunching targon as a region the mountain was just kind of a a story that they wrote to it's like a color piece for the region um that just explains what mount targon is what happens when you climb to the top all that stuff um and finally twin dawns by matthew dunn which is the one that mark had mentioned where we uh there's a female avatar of pantheon ordering aurelian soul to seal a void rift um, but the magic on their enchantment controlling him is starting to wane, so he gives some sass first, which really unnerves Pantheon. Uh, then he seals the rift with a massive show of power, which completely fucking obliterates the host of Pantheon. Basically flicks a star at him. See ya. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. That's canon Pantheon. Yeah. Had you read all this before, Kyle, or was this all new to you? Um, so his new lore... I had not read. I read like a little bit of it, but not most of this stuff, which it was nice to read from this compared to what I vaguely remember from when I first ever read his old lore. Because <laughs> <laughs> like his old lore was basically like, yeah, I climb Mount Targon and now I fight everybody. That, <laughs> cool. <laughs> but thrilling yeah, stuff. But yeah, I like his stories and everything. Oh. Uh, but I don't know. I always want more from the, I guess, the champions I play. But <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's yeah. natural. I think yeah. that's me reading kind of more. <laughs> yeah. If there was yeah, like, if there was like one story you'd want to see like him do or be or be written for him. Is there anything you had like would want? I want to see direct interactions between like with him and Leona and Diana. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with that. Uh, yeah. Um, just to. Yeah. Like, for him to get a sense of, like, I guess the war that's going on, and then he's get, probably going to be like, fuck both of y'all. <laughs> I, I'm, here to, sure. I'm here to tear down the establishment. The age of man is yeah. now, basically. That's. <laughs> I, would, I would also like to get a sense of the war that's going on. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah, some of that for me, too. Because it's so very vague. And th- Diana has been left up in the air for so fucking long. So, yeah, yeah, I think Pantheon being involved in where Diana is now would be super interesting. And you could add him to the list of champions who's who's looking for Diana, which just just continues to grow. <laughs> Did they find her in the Sentinels of Light and then she just fucked off again? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, right? yeah, they didn't really explain that. They're like, yeah, she's just a Sentinel of Light now. And then, uh, bye. She said, fuck this Lunari shit. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fight this Pantheon dude real quick. And, uh... <laughs> What Nami needs a <laughs> some kind of stone so her people don't all die and the void doesn't open. I gotta go check on my moon stones. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've gotta go to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> man, I mean, a real asshole, Diana here that we've we've crafted. All right, that was kind of my pantheon impression. <laughs> <laughs> they're like Mean Girls, but they're like aspects with pantheon. I, <laughs> oh, I love this. <laughs> But I agree. I like. I think that's a good story idea. I would like to see that too. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of old pantheon, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, I guess to, to 
Um, so that's that's the the end of kind of canon pantheon. Mm. Um, but uh, you know, kind of before we uh, before we let you go here, um, is there any? Uh, do you have any? I mean, first of all, thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, thank you for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, do you have like uh, any any socials or anything that you want to kind of plug before you know, before you go? Um, no, not really. Um, I don't I, I don't do any <laughs> okay. streaming. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, I don't know. Maybe someday you'll hear me in a band. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Well, if that you, ever happens. Yeah. You do have a lot of guitars. Yes. You said. <laughs> I see a few. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that ever happens, hit us up. You are uh, more than welcome to, to plug. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thanks, man. Old bio. Mm-hmm. So it's important for me to uh, read this first line. Oh, God. <laughs> word for word. <laughs> Far above the clouds on Mount Gargantuan <laughs> resides a stalwart tribe of people known as the Stanpar. <laughs> That was a Mad Libs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gargantuan was yeah, what it was called. Mount Gargantuan. It, Gargantuan. Yep. And, uh, and his funny. people were the Stamper. Or they Stampar. were like, it's a big mountain. Knows. <laughs> <laughs> Unobtainium. <laughs> I love, can I just say, like what modern day Hemingway hit us with Stanpar. Like, you know, he's kind of like a Spartan. <laughs> but what do we say that's not Spartan? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> The Riddler has entered the fucking building. They'll never deduce this shit. <laughs> I forgot about that shit. Oh my god! I was so hung up, hung up on Gargantuan Mountain. I could tell. I could tell I it had not didn't landed. Didn't even notice. It, yeah, the Stanpar Spartan did not land. Yeah, oh so my that god! Was so funny. They're like, I'm just gonna move three letters, and we're done. My work here. Is I could done. jumble them, but fuck it. Who's got that time? <laughs> <laughs> so uh basically their whole thing was that they remember the rune wars and they uh they know that the league of legends can only repress the rising tides of violence for so long uh and each member of their tribe is bred to be a disciplined and vicious warrior uh preferring to battle soldiers of noxian or damasian armies only when outnumbered at least 10 to 1 uh-huh. so i mean they're kind of a big deal <laughs> Uh, and then Pantheon just found it insulting that people of Valorant would instill an organization to replace war, complete with so-called champions, without including the Stanpar. <laughs> so uh, he descended to the league to show the world a true warrior. <laughs> Sorry, Stanpar has got me fucked up. You've got to excuse Stanpar me. Stanpar is really good. That's really good. Oh my god, he's in so much Journal of Justice. He's in a bit he of is. Journal of Justice. O- only technically three issues. It's like yeah. a page and a half, John. But the first one he shows up twice, that's the thing. <laughs> uh, so once in an article about... The right, stamp part. I fucking love this. <laughs> okay. This, this is better than the stamp Is this... Oh. Okay. Right. No, it's what not is? better than the stamp part. Mm. But it's pretty good. There's one of them that's pretty funny. Is this the Ash one? Uh, uh, I, oh no, it's not the Ash one. That one's very good, though. Um... <laughs> So this one is an article about how the Summoner's Rift is being renovated. Um, and Sin Zhao's upset that his new look, which was a plug for Visro Sin Zhao, uh, that people are confusing him for Pantheon. And he said, I need the look of my armaments to make it clear that I am not anything like that arrogant barbarian, which Great is how Sin Zhao sounds. Yeah. I love um, him as like this prissy like <laughs> diva. Like he just will not go on the fucking rift. If he's, like I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to look up this skin now. And uh, and then Tarek had this to say about Oh my god, he did look like Pantheon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Shit. Even, yeah. Like a lot. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, and then Tarek had this to say about it, which is unrelated to Pantheon, but I don't want to wait until the te- tease to talk about it. Uh, the League giving everyone makeovers is truly exciting, commented Tarek, the Gem Knight, after emerging from the League tailor shop. We've all been abiding to last season's fashion, like it's the <laughs> law somewhere. Red is clearly out. It's now Ruby for vigor. <laughs> Wow, okay. Thanks for that preview of old Tarek. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, I got you. 
Uh, and then the second place is uh, that is where the ash bin yeah, comes yeah. in. A reader says a recent rumor spreading around Freljord claimed that a tall, large warrior with a spear who appears to be Pantheon climbs up to the queen's chamber during the night. Could this be a possible affair between the Frost Archer and the Artisan of War? If so, what could the future hold for both of them, her husband and her kingdom, if an heir is produced not of King Trindamir's blood? <laughs> uh, so, basically, they just respond to that by saying that uh, they're baseless rumors, Ash is far too busy for that sort of thing, and if Pantheon <laughs> wanted to get onto a balcony, he'd mandrop onto it, not climb onto it like a peasant. <laughs> I love the wow, wow. The excuse, like the response, like she's too busy for side dick, man. She, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no time. Her and Trend are like this. Trendemir is exhausting enough as it is. Right? <laughs> God, you know what this made me think of is like you ever be checking. I don't know if they still have these. You checking out at a grocery store and they've got like those little like those little things that are about like soap operas. <laughs> like you're seeing those little paper booklets. Oh, I don't think they make yet. those anymore. But they might. This is what the ju- the Journal of Justice was. Was it was you're checking out at you know Stop and Shop or you know Vons or whatever, and there's oh the lo- the latest gossip rag about Days of Our Lives, but it's Trendemir and shit. I love it. <laughs> that the, they do feel yeah. like little covers of teen people. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, now she has to begin in issue 24 where people are complaining about sunlight in the middle of the night coming from Mount Targon so institute officials reached Pantheon for comment uh, because Pantheon is native, native to Mount Targon and his tribe the Rakor live upon its slopes at this point I think they had given up on the stand park <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did, that didn't take long uh, <laughs> there is a small sect of the Rakor who devote their lives to the worship of the sun rather than the glory of war they are a small but vital aspect of our culture but none of them hold the power to perform such a feat as to call down the sun itself, unless, <gasps> unless, the artisan of war declined to comment further. So, guess which champion uh, this was the teaser for? <laughs> Wu Kong, obviously. Wu Kong, <laughs> correct. Uh, no, this was uh, this was our first introduction to Leona before she was released. Oh, Jesus Christ! I was not paying attention. <laughs> I'm really hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did like that on the wiki, unless was, was what was hyperlinked to Leona. <laughs> Just a hyperlink right. unless. Oh, that's great. Oh, man. Oh. And then finally, issue 25, we got the mailbag of justice. That was uh, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Basically, some dude wanted to know where Pantheon got his weapons and what his training was like. Uh, so he says, the Rakor have no concept of training. For my people, what you call training is the height of childhood experience. We relish the day we first enter the arena with our peers, wielding wooden spears, shields, and swords. We live for the dream of one day receiving a relic weapon. Mine, my spear and shield, belonged to a warrior called Zeonia long ago. One day, when I die in glorious battle, they will be passed on again. <laughs> I was bold in training. (laughs) (laughs) Good God. You merely adopted the spear. I feel like my bait impression. So good. (laughs) I feel like I kind of had it at first, but I lost. (laughs) Stuff like marshmallows in my mouth or something. I'd be like, that's how you do a bait impression. Chubby Baby. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Chubby uh. Baby. Yeah. That would definitely be in the Harley Quinn show. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, cinematics. He shows up in a few cinematics. Uh, first off, he has returned, which is the Aurelian Soul teaser trailer. We see him... Uh, we see Aurelian Soul vaguely in the sky, and then we see Pantheon's kind of uh, silhouette staring at him. Um, and yeah, this was kind of the direct follow-up to the the spear story. Yeah. And then we have Absolution, which is the final cinematic of the Sentinels of Light event, uh, where Ruined Pantheon prevents the rest of the Sentinels from following Viego through the portal. And after Viego's defeated, the mist leaves Pantheon, and we see uh, no aftermath. <laughs> yeah. But we assume everything's cool. It's even better because when the... 
So Pantheon has kind of summoned this army of like mist wraiths, and when Viego's defeated, the mist wraiths all disappear too. So it's just fucking just Pantheon, <laughs> just chilling. That's gotta be awkward. <laughs> that would have been great. They're having like this really dramatic like scene, and there's a cutaway of like him and Graves, like I don't know, chilling, or like he's crying and Graves like awkwardly like I don't know. I I love the idea of like a a comedy cutaway to them for just a second. Oh, that'd be great. That would be good. It would it would help address. Uh, a lot of confusion because they do a lot of wide shots at the end of the cinematic which pan across the area where Pantheon definitely just was <laughs> so, so I have to imagine he kind of like awkwardly just walked uh, to camera left <laughs> Pant honey you're in the shot can, can you can you move just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Mike anyway. Wazowski bit. The Riot logo just goes over him. I don't know. Oh my god, that's great. <laughs> and then we've got uh, The Call, where Pantheon is climbing Targon again to get his powers <laughs> back. Uh, he encounters the Raharak and Leona, who fight him for some reason. Um, again, like, I get why Pantheon is upset about this. Um... Uh, maybe Leona's just upset that Pantheon's fighting the Raharak, but it seems like if if Leona and the Solari are out to get the Lunari and Lunari sympathizers, the last interaction Pantheon has had with the Lunari was when he fucking summoned an avalanche on top of uh, Diana's head, which seems like, uh, you know, uh, seems like something that aspect of uh sun would be kind of cool with but they're not they fight here <laughs> um and uh you know comets come down and blow him off the mountain but then he's able to reignite his powers and ascend again which i guess i also have the question too like i guess if his powers came back enough for him to go back up why is the ascension even necessary you just raise the risk of another aspect coming in but who knows <laughs> It's a little it's a little too vague for my tastes. You would think, you know, there's like a there's an interaction or a dialogue that probably should have happened between him and Leona before they fought. Like you can get mm-hmm. there. And yeah, your whole question too of like like what's the, what is that fucking I don't know what that portal is and I don't know why he wants that portal so bad. So, so why is why does my man want the gateway? You know what I mean? Like I just want to know that. He's got to get to Targon Prime. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know if they I feel like Targon Prime is an idea that they are not gonna put into mainline lore ever. Right. <laughs> it completely <laughs> trivializes everything. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, weird. I guess it's worth mentioning during the fight, uh, a little fun little uh thing is that when he is fighting the Raharak, he does put his uh spear down. He does he is like basically unarmed when fighting the normal people. Um he just kinda fights them with his shield. Even though, at this point, he doesn't have the aspect. He's just, like, some fucking dude. Um, But he's like, nah, I still don't need my spear. Um, He doesn't pick that up until Leona comes down. Yeah. Which is cool. It's a cool detail. Yeah. (laughs) And then, uh, finally, he shows up in the Teamfight Tactics mobile launch trailer. I just, real quick, we talk about, like, why would you be one of the people? Like, you're in a group of 50 about to fight one dude. And not only are you about to fight one dude who's willing to fight you, but he puts his weapon down. <laughs> Before. <laughs> my, my bet for this one, because you know they were here because of Leona. Yeah. Um, and she was just chilling in the background, and they were probably like, all right, no, we've got an aspect too. She's going to come out and she's going to save us. But she fucking just sat on her ass and was like, all right, they're dead now. I guess I'll go in. <laughs> this is just like, like that oh, other story fuck. of hers. Yeah. She has a real issue mm. with that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. This is not my Leona. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Team Fight Tactics mobile launch trailer. Uh, yeah, Pantheon, Brom, Nico, and Kindred fight Aurelian Soul. So that's fun. Neat. Dope. And they've got a cool remix of the TFT music that they wrote for this trailer that has a real Gangplank Galleon vibe to it, which I fucking love. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I'll have to listen yeah, to this it. was also, I think this was before, this was before they were doing the extent of the animated trailers they're doing now for TFT. Because I don't know if you all have seen like mm. recent animated trailers for TFT, but like they're pretty fucking cool now and they're adorable. Yeah, the production back in the t- yeah, definitely more production value. 
Uh, this was in that transitional period, I think. It doesn't just have the in-game graphics of some of the initial trailers, um, but it doesn't have the full fleshed-out storylines of the new ones. Pretty cool, though. Okay. All right, honey, my bedtime's in 10 minutes. All right, I got this. We got some quotes. Uh, we mentioned the original Pantheon having a bunch of 300 references. Uh, mm. So he's got one that says, they will not enjoy this. He's got another that says, getting kicked into a well is the least of your worries. Mm. And the last, my profession, you know, now that I think of it, I've always wanted to be a baker. Oh. Uh, and we've got some interesting lore quotes. He's got a lot of good quotes in his lore, actually. He talks a lot. Um, <laughs> Bitch won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a Garen and Katarina quote. Battle is a dance, and the fortunate find their partner. Now, this is 2019. This isn't any old shit. This hmm. is new stuff. And only says it to those two. Uh, to Zoe, I have faced many self-proclaimed gods. The worst wears the face of a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scary shit. Uh, when he's talking to any of the demigods, so Orn, uh, Anivia, or... Um, you know, Big Bear. <laughs> Bola Bear. Uh, Bola Big Bear. Uh, Bola Big Bear. Uh, is this a god or a rug? Oh. <laughs> Savage. Uh, Even Anivia? Could you imagine that rug? <laughs> Frosty. <laughs> not be comfortable at all. It would not. Uh, he's got a quote that says, Behind me lies a farm. I wonder if there is bread above the hearth. And if I will ever return. Aww. Um, And then he's got another one that says, Because we fall, the climb must be our destination. And then he does fall. And then he does end up in the climb. All right, honey. <laughs> he's very Sisyphean in that way, I suppose. Oh, um, yeah. Right? Dude's always falling and climbing. I don't know. Except he makes it to the top every time. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got no rods. So it's a lot better for him, I suppose. And he's got superpowers. Right. Mm. Yeah, he it's can falling just apart. fly to the top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 all right au time first we have uh glaive warrior pantheon which t is not technically part of an au but it does have lore uh so born of a wolf and bearing the wolf standard into battle this dacian glaive warrior fights in the cold of the carpathian mountains knowing the blood of his enemies will keep him warm um and this this is actually um uh, this is a reference to the Dacians, um, and uh, is it who are Dacian? like a, a Thracian sub. It could be Dacians. That makes more sense. I don't know how. I, know what, I know what you're talking about, though. <laughs> um, but they're a Thracian subgroup who were um, the ancient inhabitants of the cultural region of uh, Dace, Dacia, which uh, includes present-day countries of Romania, Moldova, as well as parts of Ukraine, eastern Serbia, northern Bulgaria, Slovakia, Hungary, and southern Poland. And the release of this skin was in celebration of the Romanian server launch. Cool. Looking at these is making me realize that I've seen, like, three Pantheon skins, apparently. <laughs> yeah, way more skins than I remembered. <laughs> I haven't seen, like, so many of these. Uh... Next up, we have Fables, which he's, again, not technically a part of, but this skin has lore, and it isn't part of any skin line, and it clearly belongs in Fables. Uh, this one is Perseus Pantheon. Favored by the gods, Perseus gathered five sacred artifacts and even tamed the wild Pegasus, all in his quest to rescue fair Andromeda, only to turn the relics against those same gods when they unleashed the Gorgons upon humanity. Cool. I think I say Gorgonzola for a second, which wouldn't have made sense. Gorgonzola. <laughs> Fuck your cheese. <laughs> uh, next, we got Wonders of the World, set in an alternate Earth where each champion represents the culture of a real world nation. This one is Myrmidon Pantheon. I've never seen this in my life. They say the Myrmidons were shaped by the gods that Zeus himself quickened life into magma. But then the Myrmidons marched. They marched against us, and in the ash of their skin, the fire of their merciless eyes, I saw all the wars that humanity had wrought, that they were us. Damn, I've heard of okay, Myrmidons so before, but it's some fucking I'm badass looking, here. I'm right. looking at this skin, and I zoomed in on the Pantheon part. Cool, right? And then I'm scrolling over, and then there's just a giant finger. 
<laughs> He's just in a big hand. He's yes, being crafted Zeus. from the magma of <laughs> Zeus. Magma. <laughs> you give me shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason I do <laughs> shitty awesome powers. Oh my god. I love it. Okay. <laughs> First of all, if you are a millennial and you can hear the word magma without thinking magma, then fuck you. You're a liar. I can, I can tell it was the reflexes taking over. <laughs> I didn't even think of it. <laughs> and you know what? Y'all got exactly what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not wrong. Shit. All right, what you got? <laughs> All right, next we got Heavy Metal, set in a dystopian world where Riot Corp took over the world and people fight in companies' corporate-sanctioned Rift Wars gladiatorial arenas to survive, and each champion is a futuristic arena fighter. They, they just made this up. I've never seen this skin in my life. Full Metal Pantheon. <laughs> a former Full Metal Robot Fighting League champion, two times reigning 14 title defenses, Pantheon was forced to retire in disgrace after a scandal involving Targon fabrications. <gasps> Reimagining, reemerging from retirement to face the chosen champion Jace, Pantheon may be damaged, but has found that revenge adequately charges his weapon systems. I like that. Which is, sounds like code for an erection, doesn't it? <laughs> Ew. I was just reading your notes real quick because I was wondering if you put in gasp here or something like that in your notes, but you didn't. Nah, it's off the It doesn't dome, have baby. erection like in parentheses. <laughs> like an arrow pointing. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Boner joke teehee. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. Oh. Uh, next up, we got Dragon World. Now, this I've seen. Yeah, there we this go. This skin exists. Twice <laughs> did Dragonfire consume the world. Twice from the Embers were born heroes. Uh, this one's Dragon Slayer Pantheon. Uh, when Dragonfire consumed the world, heroes rose from the Embers and cast down the beasts of legend. These warriors passed into history, then myth, until Pantheon alone remained. The last of the ancient Dragon Slayers, swearing upon the skies eternal revenge. And there is a short story associated with this called Rise of the Dragon Slayers. Um, this is before Rise of the Sentinel, say. <laughs> it it's, it's before the, the term Rise of uh, was tainted. Uh, they arrived at sundown, five of them. The attack was methodical, brutal. The keep's defenses were useless. For an hour, the sky rained fire. There aren't enough survivors to tally our losses. Before we fled, I examined a section of the south wall liquefied by the dragon's breath. No stone could have withstood that heat. Could anything? I've never witnessed a dragon before today. Now I see nothing else. The dragons didn't want the city. They wanted us. We fled through the melted stonework, but an old one hunted us. When all seemed lost, two extraordinary men came to our defense. Their valor bought us time to escape, but even they could not leave unscathed. If men like these cannot defeat the beasts, we are truly lost. The dragon tracked us down. This time the heroes were prepared. One distracted the beast while the other waited high above. From a cliff's edge he dove upon the creature. His spear was true. We studied the thing, hoping to find a weakness. Instead, we took its strength. The scales are more resilient than any material I have ever known. They, rem they remain cool even when put directly to the flame. With its hide, I will armor our heroes. We may now stand a chance, but to wage a war, we will need more scales, and those with the courage to wear them. And uh, Pantheon was the only original Dragon Slayer from the first attack, uh, still alive when Dragon Sorceress Zyra led the second wave of dragons against the people. Oh, okay. Ooh, so my girl! Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Uh, Got Monster Hunter at the end of that one. Yeah, it did. You gotta, you gotta kill 17 dragons, though. <laughs> they might have a chance to drop a scale. If not, you have to just keep fighting them. Like, I killed 93 dragons. <laughs> God, there was recently a fucking Viva La Dirt League about this, where they were killing boars, trying to find boar hearts. And they're like, oh, that one doesn't have a heart. Just check the other one. But like, what do you mean check the other one? Why doesn't this boar have a heart? <laughs> it was just alive. <laughs> Anyway, next up we got Highway Heretics. Set in a dystopian wasteland, each of the champions represent Fallout survivors turned into vandals, raiders, and roadsters. This and skin isn't real! This encompasses Road Warrior and Vandal. Please look him up! I He's in a diaper! I was gonna say, I know which one you're talking about. I don't need to look up shit. <laughs> this is not real! 
Oh, it is, baby. You need to learn Pantheon to broadcast Pantheon. scan. <laughs> you can't run from the past. Why does no one use this? Oh. Why would you use any other skin? It's a good question. Because it's too intimidating. Uh, it's true. <laughs> When you show up to battle in a diaper, people know that you don't. You don't want to get everyone He's like a chastity belt with a bull on a dick. He's got a couple chastity belt. Oh my uh, god! Chance. Anyway, That's go ahead. I'm one. <laughs> uh, you can't run from your past. Not when it's riding you down from the back of a doom buggy, <laughs> scrap spear race, hunting for the dregs of the Vandal King across the wastes. It's said they're the only ones who know his name and what happened that night when he became ruthless. This dude waxes, man. <laughs> <laughs> no body hair in the future. <laughs> There's zero no. body hair in the zero. future. <laughs> oh, yeah. Zombie vs. Slayer. Set in a world where champions are zombies and zombie slayers. I've seen this one. It this exists. One. Zombie Slayer Pantheon. Uh, a former mechanic at the same auto body shop Jinx once worked at, Pantheon dreamed of switching careers until a mutagenic virus turned everyone else into zombies. Slicing monsters in half with a chainsaw spear is way more fun than replacing windshield wipers anyway. Fun. It's a fun skin line. These are fun. Yeah, I like these. We got Ashen Knights. Many ages past, a great king waged a glorious war to break the shackles of magic on the world so mankind could forge its own destiny. Yet upon severing the final font of enchantment, the king was lost, the foundations of the world crumbled, and his once legendary knights were left alone to madness, ruin, and ash. This is this Ashen is Conqueror Pantheon. Yeah, it is new. A brave knight of old, who legends say slew a god in battle so that all humankind might see that they were their own masters. Standing watch over the ashes of his former lands, Pantheon himself is now the only foe left to conquer, and he awaits a worthy challenger to face one final time. Okay. Like old Pantheon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> old man uh, Pantheon. <laughs> I'm pa part of the stand pole. <laughs> okay, Grandpa. <laughs> He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what's happening. I'm from Mount Gargantuan. <laughs> oh, shit. We gotta put him in a home. It's time. <laughs> the doctors just say it's... Just agree with him. <laughs> Can oh. you get him his diaper? I'll see you in the League of Legends. You're turning into Bane. won't be moving back around. Anyway, please. Baker. Baker Pantheon. Culinary Master. Oh, God. Uh, Culinary Master is the incredibly popular cooking competition competition, competition. reality <laughs> series. Streaming now, everywhere, on all platforms. All 1,000 episodes from each of the 50 seasons, even Culinary Master superstars and celebrity Culinary Masters. Start binging today. This one's Baker Pantheon. He's the armored dough puncher, the Targonian aspect of tasty pastries. He's always wanted to be a baker, and now he'll throw down in the ultimate cooking showdown. Put your hands together for Pantheon! <sighs> We're all in agreement that dough puncher sounds dirtier. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> really <laughs> bad. <laughs> it could be because I still got diaper Pantheon in my head. It's very sexual skin, but... Uh, Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, this is also, I mean, this he's technically part of, there's like crossover here between him and the Star Guardian. Okay. Uh, because in the Slumber Party Summoning, which is in the Star Guardian AU, Soraka comes to the party with a box of cinnamon rolls from Pantheon's Pastries. Oh, I want a fucking cinnamon roll. And in the Twilight Star, <laughs> we find out Soraka actually works at Pantheon's Pastries and is staying late since they're short-staffed. Well, I guess nice. good that he's got his business. I'm sorry to hear they're having hiring issues, but you know, it's a, it's all right, man. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> Very timely. Uh, right. <laughs> all right. Next up, we got Ruined King. Uh, the black mist gathers. The heroine comes, and the Ruined King has risen once more. Viego's corruption blankets Ruined Terra, turning friends into foes and bringing entire nations to their knees. The only ones with the power to stop him are the Sentinels of Light. An ancient order led by Senna and Lucian, and they must call upon champions from every corner of the realm to fight back the Black Mist and end the Ruined King's reign of terror once and for all. <laughs> this one is Ruined Pantheon. 
The mist did not just subsume Atreus, but also resurrected the long-dead spirit of Pantheon, the old aspect of war himself. With Atreus's stubborn defiance silenced, Pantheon can resume control and revel in battle once again. It doesn't matter to him whose banner he fights under. If that banner is the ruined king's, so be it. But we also have Prestige Ascended Pantheon. Uh, Pantheon was defeated once, but with all of Terra on the line, now Atreus must defeat it himself. Seizing back control from the aspect of war, Atreus harnesses the celestial power of Targon itself, briefly, briefly becoming not just a vessel or an aspect, but something new, something immensely powerful, and entirely his own. Uh, and in case you're wondering, the prestige skins are not canon. Dang. Riot Wilkingham <laughs> described them as a what-if style execution, and this one is the what if Atreus defeated Pantheon on his own instead of uh, Viego being defeated and Pantheon just being subsumed back into his mind. Okay. So, okay. But that didn't happen. Great. It would have been cool. <laughs> would have been cool. Been cool. <laughs> yeah. And finally, last one, Pulse Fire. After unlocking the secrets of time travel, these champions are thrust into a far-flung dystopian future. Oh, there he is. While Chrono Enforcers relentlessly pursue them across time and space, a small few have escaped into history, taking their technology along for the ride. How have I not seen this one either? Why does nobody play Pantheon skins? I don't know. I think he's got like a few that people really like. But I yeah. could be wrong. Well, this one's a Pulsefire Pantheon. The sole survivor from a timeline devoured by Praetorians, Pantheon refused to succumb when the Marauders ran him through and left him for dead. He now dons the Pulsefire suit to hunt down those who would dare risk creating the anomalies that unleash the robotic hordes upon time and space. Um, so, shows up in a few cinematic, or uh, a few things. Uh, one cinematic, all systems online, where we basically just get to see all the pulse fire weapons highlighted, including Pantheon, Spear, and Shield. And then the short story, Out of Time, which is where Ezreal's time jumping, trying to escape all the Chrono Enforcers, who are trying to stop him for, you know, creating the anomalies that are destroying timelines. Um, and his pulse fire core is damaged in his fight against Lucian, so he pops up in a timeline with Pantheon and kind of sees Pantheon standing there in the middle of like this barren wasteland. So he decides, like, ah, I'm going to steal Pantheon's hex core, or uh, pulse core. Um, it doesn't go great. Uh, Pantheon, you know, sees him, or not sees him, but like knows he's there. Um, and then Ezreal finds out that he's actually the one responsible for this wasteland <laughs> like it was Ezreal's time jumping that caused this um, and that this wasteland is actually Pantheon's home world <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, he gets distracted by this knowledge for a second because that he kind of thought of himself as the good guy in this story um, but in that distraction Pantheon turns around and fucking breaks his nose and then just starts just you know chucking his massive chrono spears at him and uh Ezreal jumps to a different time period mm. to get away. All right. Fun fact time. Yay. We covered a few of them, but mm -hmm. uh, number one, he's voiced by uh, George uh, Giorgio. I think is how you pronounce it. I think so. Um, his champion theme is composed by Edward Ed the Conqueror, Bernician, <laughs> with uh, Rush Garcia providing the vocal. Gar vocal? I like his oh, theme yeah. a lot. Apparently, I've not heard this one. Like, fucking theme. I think it was the first. I may have heard it. Was it the yeah. first one that they did when they started doing the themes? That he was the his was the first one, one of those that they put out. Because that's a new thing I that they know. started doing was those theme videos, and I think that was the first one. I could be wrong. Maybe. What the the? Not like a login like stream having, theme, having but their like own unique. I guess more like because that's something they they started recently. They'll like release a champion and they don't do a login screen. I don't think they put out a video no, that's like for a long time. it's like here's the theme and then here's like concept art and kind of what they looked like through development some uh, of their skins. I feel like his was the first they released in that way. Yeah, but obviously, yeah, other champions have had musical themes before that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the scrapped narrative pitches um, for the rework involved Pantheon rescuing a young girl and mentoring her, much like Wolverine in X-23. Yeah. 
Uh, and then one of the scrap spells tested during development included Pantheon throwing his spear and taking out a sword and fighting with it until he picked up a spear again. Oh, hmm. interesting. Uh, his current quotes, his secret dream of baking, is carried over from his previous joke. <laughs> um, during development, his primary color was changed from red to blue in order to keep him consistent with other newer released or updated Mount Targon champions, and also to differentiate Pantheon from Leona and the other Solari, mm. whose primary color is now red and gold, since he's no longer part of their religious order. Hmm. Uh, Old Pantheon's dance was the Jailhouse Rock, <laughs> uh, which is the same as Rakan's current dance. Hmm. Uh, we talked about all his weapons names. Um, if you look at Pantheon Splash, there's a massive ass Aatrox in the background of it that I did not really? see until I read that. Yeah. I gotta see this. It is very cool. Yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. Um, the Ruthless and Myrmidon skins used to just be straight up recolors of his base skin. And Ruthless was a, a very clear He Man ripoff. Mm, I only vaguely remember what some of those. I'll have to go look at the old one looks, looks hmm. like. Yeah, Ruthless was the diaper one, um, <laughs> which, if you're imagining He-Man, that's the diaper, and he's even got, like, the X across his chest um, that, that He-Man has. They tried to make one of the parts of the Xs, like, a bandolier of uh, guns, I think, to make it less obvious, but it's still very obvious. Yeah, I, I now remember this. <laughs> good change. <laughs> yeah, good change. Good change. And uh, yeah, that's uh, those are those are the fun facts, and that's that's Pantheon. That's Pantheon. A nice quick one today. I know, nice I know it was long. One. Real quick, <laughs> I, I don't, I know you gotta go. Real quick. No, no, it's okay. You got a Rune Terror release um, where he shows up, mm. where he hangs out with Eula some more. So I assume this happened like sometime between now and I don't know, sometime in that six year gap or something. I don't know, but looks like he gathered up Eula and a few other Targonians, and they went and they fought, and I think killed. I guess this demon called uh, Camphor, something like that. Damphor, Camphor, I want to say it is demon of of sorrow uh, who kind of lurks around Targon, and they gathered themselves up and went and fought and did good. I guess. Nice, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. It's, yeah, yeah. I think, like I said, she doesn't look like she's sixty eight in the card art, but she's got her own card. So I assume this is something that happened. In the past, at some point, but I don't know. Mm. You Hard know, to tell with she's Runeterra. A, she's a Targonian sixty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> she's Runeterra in sixty-eight. God, you would look That's so like fucking 30, haggard. You know. Runeterra in sixty-eight. <laughs> I guess it depends on who you are. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> are you a main character? You're either or dead or mortal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Any quick final Pantheon thoughts? Uh, I want to see him hang out with Morgana because I think they would vibe. I think she also probably Ooh. hates aspects in the way he might. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Oh, man, they'd really bond. Mm. Power couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Morgana don't need no man. And <laughs> Pantheon don't need no woman. That's true. They're perfect for each other. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't need a man. He didn't need a woman. <laughs> Find out how they fall in love in Scars and Stars. I was trying to think of what the title is. It was just <laughs> Scars and Stars. <laughs> Because she's got, like, scars, scars up for her scars wings. Scars, scars, and broken wings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Oh, my God. <laughs> this just sounds like my emo fan fiction. It's such a good emo <laughs> fan fiction name. All right. Well, that was Pantheon. Thank you for listening. And thank you to Kyle for joining us. Uh, we... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. you just uh, We're just falling apart at the seams on this one. I know. We have a Twitter, if Twitter still exists. Uh, it's... <laughs> It's at Loreheads. Um, we also have a Twitch, twitch.tv slash Loreheads. I haven't streamed in a bit. I'd like to soon. Um, John does stream every weekend. TFT a lot of the times, mostly. Um, but he'll throw in an indie game in there as well. Uh, we have a YouTube as well. If you could subscribe and leave a review, that would help us so much. Um, and not leave a review. That would be something else. Yeah, I mean, if you want to leave a review, you can leave a comment. Like Apple Podcast, but yes, if you, you want to review the podcast <laughs> elsewhere, leave a comment on the YouTube. <laughs> Keep it snappy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a Discord channel as well. If you want to kind of hang out and chat with us there, and we have a Patreon. Thank you to all of our patrons. But a very special thank you to our Madarda and All Chat tier enabled patrons: Chloe Things, 
Kindred Enjoyer, King of Hearts, Rel, Shupa Moustache, and Techno Robert. You are all amazing. And if uh, I had the aspect in my mind, I'd fight it out to protect you all, too. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. man. <laughs> yeah. That is a pretty big promise. Well, let's hope I don't run across the aspect. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure to join us next week, because uh, we'll be talking about our daughter, the keeper of the hammer, Poppy.